Welcome to Tropical Livable Spaces in Trinidad and Tobago. We're now in San Fernando. We're going to meet the pastor of the Livingwood Christian Center and the CEO of Acts 25. We heard he had a problem with trying to convert a room into some sort of livable space. So we might turn it into an office space or might turn it into a prayer room, turn it into some conference room or something. So we're going to go take a look and we're going to see what we could do with Pastor Nelson Sammy Gilharte. Hi, good morning. I came to see Pastor Sammy. Okay, just proceed for that please. Okay, all right, thanks. Hey, Pastor Sammy. Hey, I'm Jerome see, from Tropical Livable Spaces. We heard you had a problem. Yeah, definitely. Um, when the building was built, we had a room that was left undone. Okay. Uh, and it was more than one reason. First of all, the, the, the whole room was out of whack. The measurements were hmm. really bad. The floors were bad. Oh. Uh, the ceiling was, was open. Mm -hmm. And um, it became a junk room. And so when it, we, we spoke to you about what, what could be done, because mm -hmm. you wanted to do some stuff, I said, well, let's see what we can do with this room. And, and uh, you know, you came down. And uh, I appreciate what you have in mind. Mm -hmm. and so let's take a look and see what's going to happen. Because when you see the room, mm -hmm. I hope you can handle it. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, we can handle anything. That's what we're here for. So why don't we take a walk up and take a look at the room? Why don't you show us what it's okay, all about? Okay, let's go and see the room. Okay. We had five days to do this project. So we were making this project for uh, possibly a prayer room. But whatever it is, that room's gonna be, we had to complete this project. So we sent a material list down so that we could get the material like we needed to get uh, the metal studs and the drywall and so forth. Um, Nelson Sammy, who was uh, we doing the room for, um, he sent out some orders, material list to a couple of suppliers. Uh, he basically got replied from one supplier and um, in terms of the pricing. It turned out that we were supposed to have material to start on Monday because we had five days to complete this project. Got there on Sunday, realized that no material has showed up because the suppliers never really did send back, uh, you know, a, a cost on the material. And then in terms of their shipment and stuff like that. So here, Monday come around now to start the project, have everything lined up, everything ready to go, no material. Now we have to run around and try and get material. So we found out material from this one supplier in Marabella. We ordered, put the material in, list in, got all the materials set up. One of the things is we ordered some 12 foot metal studs, some 10 foot metal studs. We ordered the drywall. There was a couple of things that they didn't have. Uh, we figured, well, we could, maybe could pick it up somewhere else. Then it turned out that uh, we were supposed to get delivery at 8.30 on Tuesday morning. Well, 8.30 on Tuesday morning, materials still didn't get right here. Time is ticking, clock is going, and we have to complete this job by Friday. Finally, we were able to have some materials to start working at 10.30 on Tuesday. Counting the material list, we found out that they were supposed to send us 12-foot metal studs. They only sent us 10-foot metal studs. So we phoned the supplier back. Supplier says, hey, we don't have any 12-foot metal studs. We charge you for 12, but we only send 10s because that's all they had. Because the walls on them are so far out of square, and we have nothing really square in here to work with, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna square the room up to itself. First, we're gonna take a two feet line off the wall, and then we're gonna snap a chalk line along that two foot line from this end and that end. So we're taking the longest wall, that's, you know, because that's the most visible thing. Edison's my main man here today. Okay, that's really out of square, man, whoa. <laughs> Well, we got a contention. We got something here to work with, man, to try and square this up. Okay, so we dropped our line two feet away from this wall, and then we did a perpendicular line across here to get a square. And what we used was we used a three, four, five method, like three feet by four feet, then we measured five feet across so that we could um, get a square. And if you notice, we put a frame and square on the ground here, and you can see how square the lines are. So now we're gonna use the furthest point that we could use, which is 13 and a half inches. And we lay our track down and keep each one of them away, 13 inches away. Now put the back of the track, uh, yeah, exactly. And then you keep a hand on that point down there, on that 13 inch there. And I'll measure this here, and I'll go 13 and a half. And I'm good right there. 
And then we'd go ahead and we do the same thing all along the wall. So what we usually do is when we join in two tracks together, like button up to each other, we just cut back about an inch away from the track. We flip it over, cut it out. Then we do a cut. And then we fit that in. So it fits inside the track and then that way it will stay. So here's our last screw. And, and now we got our track laid down all the way along the wall. And as you can see, how bad it is compared to the floor. So now what we'll do is we'll cut all our studs, we measure them, and we'll cut them all at 98 and a half inches. And then we put a track on top of that, and that'll be a wall that's um, on this wall. And then we'll square up the other one to that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark out each stud at 16 inches on center. And that's good support for the drywall. So I'll start marking more from that end and I'll work myself this way. And each stud will now be at 16 inches on center. Here I'm gonna check this wall for plumb and see which way is out. So it looks like the top is out on this wall here. So now we know which way the wall is leaning and it's leaning back. So now we know that if we put our track up against the bottom, we'd have no problem with plumbing the top of the track. So now that we determined the length of the track on the back wall, and we did our measurements already, we found out that using our square lines that we have laid down, we have a measurement at the furthest point here of uh, 21 and a half inches. But when you go down to this end, if we go right to the end here, you got a measurements of 18 and three quarters, 18 and five eighths. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this track out to 18 and 5 eighths of an inch. So right now, we have our square corner, and then all the rest of the walls could be built off of this. The next wall here that's gonna be for the dividing wall could be parallel to that back wall. Same thing with the back wall over there could be parallel to the other wall, and then the wall on the other side could be parallel to this wall. Now that we have a square, so then we'll end up having a square room. So we're back at Livingwood Christian Center today, day two of the framing up and redoing of this uh, room that they had upstairs that we turn it into a storage space and we turn it into an office. Uh, we already have uh, three perimeter walls framed up, working on the one partition wall that's left and um, we have one more exterior wall to frame up. A couple of complications we ran across is that they gave us some framing screws that don't really penetrate the metal that good. So what happens is for every four screws, every one screw we actually anchor, we have to throw away at least four of them. So that's no good. So that's being rectified today. So we are gonna get some new screws with maybe some self-tapping screws that we could use on the metal studs. for the AC unit. Yes, we can put the, um, the evaporator here yeah, okay. and run the tubing to the back there. Okay, yeah. if we could get some pressure treated or some two by treated like two by threes, for instance, like we could just put a couple of them right here and then you could screw into the two by threes without having to put ply on. So which are the units itself? Uh -huh. it should be about 15 inches. So you're looking at about 15, yes, 15 16 inches then. You have to put the unit, the inside part of the unit at that height. Because yeah. the water can run up with Right, right. And then we'd have to drill a hole and put a piece of piece of each way. That's your job, right? Yeah, that's more thing. So, so we'd have to, no, but we'd have to break that in before we do the drywall, right? We are putting up that drywall this evening. You start no, tomorrow? tomorrow? Tomorrow. Yeah, that's first thing we work on that. Yeah, okay, not a problem. I, yeah. So we expect I, you guys tomorrow. I'm going to get two bars. Yeah, but listen, listen now. <laughs> not Trini time, right? Not Trini time. <laughs> this is our extension for 12 foot stud, just like everything, you know. 
If you can't do it, call at Trini. Trini will do it for you. We ordered 12 foot metal studs. Everybody said they have them. They sent the shipment, they sent 10 footers. So here we are now today, having to do the ceiling with the 12 footers and we have no 12 footers. Phone a supplier, the supplier say, well, maybe I could get you the, the studs uh, probably tomorrow, maybe the next day. So that's no good. So what we're gonna have to do is we gotta get this done today. So we'd have to figure out some way that we could get this done with the 10 foot studs. This is what you have to do when you don't have 12 foot studs. Far, we, things are moving along pretty good. We on schedule. The electrician is going to come tonight, and he's going to do his electrical. And then by tomorrow, we should be able to get the drywall going. Hey, well, we're back again. Now, we've only worked a few hours yesterday because it was too hot down here. We were sweating, beads of sweat. So anyway, so we got a few sheets of drywall up and that went up pretty easy. Then the, that left room for the electrician to come back because he still had to pull his wires. So he got all his wiring done and stuff like that yesterday. So all that's finished off, completed. And then the HVAC uh, man, Selwyn, came in and he ended up finishing off his HVAC, so he's roughed in for the air conditioner and he's got his pipes in, he's got his uh, waste in, he's got everything set up ready to go um, for his HVAC and we got the support for him up here so he could support his HVAC unit. We supported the rafters here with um, you know, some extra metal so that we could support it from the roof structure. So when we hang the drywall that, uh, you know, the channel, the two, uh, two and a half inch channels won't um, sag. So you've got pro proper support on the top. And then when we finish, what we're gonna do is we're gonna run some pot lights up in there and that's gonna give the room a nice uh, ambience look, you know. So, so far, everything's moving along to schedule and um, considering the fact the materials and stuff like that that we need to get, but you know, that's behind us now. So then the next thing is we just gotta move it and just bang the rest of stuff off. So that's what we plan to do today. See, when you're doing drywall, you want to keep friends with the electricians and whatever trades that's happening. So what happens is when you're doing drywall and using a roto zip, you should actually take the wires and push the wires as far back as possible to the box. Because when you stick your roto zip in there, you don't want it touching these wires. So you push it back in as far as possible. This one's springing back a bit, so we'll be careful with this one, right? And same thing with these ones here, you know, you push it back as far back to the box. So you and the electrician should stay friends. You see, being good friends with the electricians, that's what happens. Then the electrician will love you.
Okay, so now with that, we've got a couple of sheets of drywall on the ceiling. We started from that end of the room and we worked to this end of the room. So now we're gonna work from this end of the room back to the other end of the room. And the reason for that is, is that we don't want the drywall joints of them to be uh, butted up against each other, so we want them to be staggered. So the longest butt joint you'll have is like four feet. Instead of having like an eight foot or a 12 foot butt joint, it looks kind of ugly on the ceiling when you try to finish it. So now we're gonna go and hang the board the other way. Here we are, we finished doing the drywall. It's all screwed off, it's all ready to go. It's all ready for tape it now. So we're back again. So just a recap on what it is we did yesterday. Now what we did was we had to have the mesh tape here, which has uh, a sticky side. And what we do is we embedded the mesh tape into the bevel joints. But as you notice on the butt joints there, butt joints there, and we did that with paper tape. Because we wanted to get this production done pretty fast, and we had a problem of trying to get um, some prick drying uh, sheet rock Nike. I'll show you what we're talking about. Uh, this product here, uh, sheet rock Easy Sand 45, which dries in 45 minutes. So eventually we found a place um, up in Trin City that was able to supply us with the sheet rock 45. And we embedded the tape with the sheet rock 45. And we also covered the nail heads with one coat. And uh, so we'd have to do two more coats on that. We're gonna use the flusher to finish off the corners. Stick our tube in here and we suck it up. And we fill it right to the top. And then I stick the head on. It just slips on. I place the tool up in the corner and I just press it and it applies the compound to the wall. Next step is we're going to be able to be doing the painting and the flooring and get that section ready for the next phase of the project. While the painting and the flooring are underway, we are heading to Port of Spain hoping we can find some furniture to furnish the new office space. We searched high and low in San Fernando but couldn't find anything that was suitable to furnish the room. We went to check out Boss Business Solutions. There we met with Jelaine Agostini, the designer for the project, who was able to introduce us to a friend that she knew there to check out their office furniture. We didn't know what to expect or if we would even find anything that would be suitable at all. Next we went to Sirocco Trading Limited and again we did not know what we would see there as we walked through the doors. Here we met with the owner, Helen Campbell, and we were able to browse through a lot of the solid wood furniture. Would we be able to find what we need or would we have to keep looking? Remember, we have to get this project completed and get the place finished before my flight back to Toronto. Time is running out. At last, Chilene was able to find some pieces of furniture that she thought would fit the decor of the office. Time to get the truck loaded and we are going to be heading back to San Fernando to decorate the room and to make sure that the project is completed and finished properly. Hey guys, 
we got the room all ready for you guys to take a look at. And you can come up and um, all the hard work, you know. So you come up and take a look at it and see what's going on. Take a look at what's been happening. Hang on here a second. I'll just um, bring in. And you can come in and see what we have done to the room. Okay. So come on in. Wow. Oh. Is this for me? Yes. <laughs> all Out of chaos came order. Yeah. <laughs> and confusion, all the stuff that was here before. This is so fantastic. Nice desk a wonderful desk. Yeah. And this. Shelves and stuff like that. Can we try it out? Yeah, sure. Go and try it out. Absolutely amazing. If you want, I can give you a call on your phone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is really excellent. Um, Very executive. The thing about it, when we first came into this room, uh, uh, even from back here, the whole room was out of shape. We, we thought, would there be anything that could fit into here that like, would make this livable, usable function? We want to commend Tropical Livable Spaces and all that you guys have done to make this room what it is today. It's been it's really fantastic. Very happy. Very happy. Very, Very. This is yeah, this is wonderful. Jelaine Agustin. Jelaine Agustin, a pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you. And I want yes, to commend you and wonderful. congratulate you on the wonderful job that you've done with this room and the decoration. And it, it has transformed the room. I love the furniture pieces, the heavy, dark look. They just pop against these walls. Everything just flows well in this room. Great job. Well, compared to um, the room was a junk room before, literally a junk room, and it's like night and day in comparison. I mean, it's a beautiful office now. I'm even thinking of, of doing my office like this now. It's really nice, nice finishing. I think this room is very executive looking. The peel is lovely and the cool green and the eyes and the walls are lovely. Well, a vast improvement from what it started off as. I mean, when it started off, it was like everything was out of plumb, out of square, out of sink, everything was out. And now, I'd like this to be my office.